Hey, hey, Tony Gas is here, popping in a little quick chat. Well, I don't know if it be quick. I'm just kind of riding around, giving me some miles, putting some miles on my car before my hair cut. But, um, you know, one of the things that I've been hearing about is cheating back. You know, a lot of times you get into a relationship and in the beginning stages, you're getting to know each other and you, you're getting, you know, you're working on, you're working on stuff together and you're figuring each other out and you're figuring yourself out. And oftentimes you have somebody that's in a relationship that's immature, that's immature, that hasn't grown, that doesn't want to grow. And the person makes bad choices and ends up cheating cheating emotionally or cheating physically and in order to cheat you know you got to go through a process of kind of creating a little distance starting some arguments creating some rifts to fuel your desire to cheat to fuel your cheating like it, it, it's hard to cheat if you're being treated amazing and the person you're with is amazing and there's no arguments so when you want to cheat you're going to start to create arguments you're going to start to look for stuff to be mad about you're going to start to look for stuff to nitpick and in the natural and normal you know connection of humans being two different people and having different personalities you're going to have disagreements and you're going to have rifts but what a cheater is gonna do, and I know this all too well because I used to be a cheater all my life before I changed my life. And so what a cheater is gonna do is a cheater gonna find those little those little riffs, that cheater gonna ride that riff on out. And the cheater gonna use that. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, I, don't, I ain't even love. See, I ain't even got no love. Don't even respect me. See, this and that. And the cheater gonna use that to go on about their business to go on cheat. But then what happens is the victim now is in this relationship with a cheater. And a lot of times cheating happens once comfort comfortability and complacency has set in. So at this time when the cheating happens, the couple could be living together. The couple could have a child or children together. The couple could be married. And so now the victim has gotten comfortable in this relationship and gotten used to being with this person. So what happens is it's hard for the victim to just up and leave. It's hard because you got to re you got to reset, you got to start all over. So if you got into the place to where you're the person in a relationship who you let go of your job or you let go of your dreams for the quote unquote family so that you could be home with the kids or so that you could support your partner in their dreams, then you may not have your credit built. You may not have a job. You may not have any money. You may not have any savings. So now when you cheated on, it's not that easy to just up and leave if you don't have a way to provide for yourself. You ain't got no money. And so a lot of times we say, oh, one time I get cheated, I'm done, I'm gone. But in reality, it's actually not that easy. And most people who get cheated on stay. <laughs> if y'all did not know that, I'm telling you from being on the other side, from on both sides of it. When I was a cheater, and that's what made my wife so different, is because every single woman I had dated before my wife, they would put up with whatever. But my wife was the first woman that I dated that would not put up with whatever. So news flash, if y'all did not know this now, because if you're the type of person you get cheated on, and it don't matter when it is, one year in, five year in, 10 year in, 15 year in, you gone, you very rare, you very rare. And if you have never been cheated on at a point where you had gotten settled into the relationship, then you can't really speak to what you'll do. 
You cannot speak to what you'll do. And that's one of the unfair things we do is we speak on other people's situation and what other people should do, but we're not in that situation. Yeah, we know what sound right. We know what should be done, but doing it and knowing what to do is two very different things. So if you've never been in that position to where you got kids with somebody or you live with somebody or you done been with somebody for a while and you done fell in love and then you got cheated on, then you don't know what it's going to take to leave. And so you got to understand that. And so here you have the victim is, is sitting here and they're in this relationship and they feeling stuck. They're feeling stuck. They're feeling trapped. And then it's like they feel betrayed. They feel betrayed. They feel unloved. They feel disrespected. They feel taken for granted. And so what that can also do is that can build up some resentment. It's going to build up resentment. It can build up some hate. And so if the person isn't in a position to leave and to start over, they may stay for financial reasons but remove their heart from the relationship and open their eyes to other options and then start to see other people and hear other people and entertain other people and then may end up cheating emotionally and or physically and to be honest with you that's the worst thing you can do it's the worst thing you can do because what happens when you do that is now you've stooped to the level of your partner. So now you're no different than your partner. Even though you were cheating back, you're no different than your partner. You, you are low class, just like your partner. You immature, just like your partner. You disrespectful, just like your partner. You nasty, just like your partner. So now you stoop to his or her level and you become just like them. So now your partner doesn't really see where they went wrong because you did the same thing now. Now you don't have an argument. Now they're like, well, hey, you a cheater too. It just, I cheated first, but you cheated, you cheated second. But the fact that you cheated mean that you a cheater and mean that you was gonna cheat regardless. Whether I cheated or not, that's in you, you was gonna cheat. And then you like, no, I only cheated because you cheated. Oh, so if I say jump off a bridge, you going to jump off a bridge? No, that ain't the same. Well, yes, it is. Because when you cheated, you could have caught HIV. When you cheated, you could have got pregnant or got somebody pregnant. So it is the same as jumping off a bridge if I say jump off a bridge. So what you trying to say? No, see, and you know what? You know what? You caught me first. But... The fact that you cheated, now that I think about it, you cheated before me. And I just didn't catch it because I don't be stalking you how you be stalking me. You cheated before me. See there, I know you cheated first. And you know what? Now that I think about this. And so now, what you was doing in revenge, not and it came out. And you may say, you know what? I don't care how they feel. I don't care what they think. But guess what? The person you cheated with also can never trust you because the person you cheated with, they know that every relationship going to have problems. So even if you end up leaving the person you with for the person you cheated with, the person you cheated with, regardless of what they say, always going to look at you with the side eye. They always going to sleep with one eye open because you's a cheater. You's a cheater. Hate to tell it to you, you're a cheater. So the thing about it is when you che revenge cheat, you mess your name up with your partner that you cheat revenge cheated on, but you also mess your name up with the person you cheated with. You mess your name up because now neither party can trust you and then if you say well well i don't want to be with the person i cheated with i just did that just to get revenge now you all the way shot out now you done lost yourself all the way now you losing in life all the way because you just risk your life you risk your health you risk your your mentality you risk everything 
by cheating with this random person. So you say you don't care and you just cheat with this random person. But what if that person you cheated with that you used as a rebound, that you used as a scapegoat, that you used just for your revenge? What if that person crazy? What if that person ready to kill by theirs? What if that person that had their heart played with one too many times? And they say, look here. Look here. I told myself I will never be cheated on again. I will never be used again. You finna pay the price. You see what I'm saying? The wages of sin is death. And so this revenge cheating, what you ought to do instead of revenge cheating, what you ought to do is when you get cheated on, if you can't leave right then, that right then is when you start creating your exit strategy. Right then is where you say, okay, I got to get a job. If you can't get a job out in public and out in the real world, then you go online and you click work from home jobs you search work from home jobs and you get you a work from home job which may be that may be um you know working for american express or bank of america at your house doing the customer service because i be when i be calling in to to my cars or to a bank account or to whatever i be hearing people kids in the background and so that could be working at home. My 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 um, sister-in-law, one of my wife's sisters, uh, from her from her mother's marriage, she um she uh she worked for I think American Express from the house, and um so she was at the house working. And oh yeah, been looking for me a little road where I can get my little testing in. When I ain't on this phone, I'm about to come back here and get my little testing in. So she worked from home. And yeah, you might get $8.50 an hour, $9.50, $10 an hour. Might have some incentives based on how many calls you take. How many things you could close or solve or whatever might have some incentives. And so you, that's what you start doing. While your partner at work or doing their thing, if they cheating out and they doing whatever, you be stacking paper. You stack paper. And then instead of revenge cheating, what you do is you tell you somebody. You tell one person that is a good person, that got a good heart, they got their life in order. Don't tell nobody who broke, busted, and disgusted like you is now. Because if you broke, busted, and disgusted right now, you telling your business to somebody else who broke, busted, and disgusted, that ain't gonna help you. Because now you done got cheated on, so you feeling miserable. So when you tell somebody else that's miserable, now y'all just miserable company. You need to tell somebody who's doing better than you. So you got to tell somebody who they got their own apartment and they live by themselves and they single as a dollar bill and they got a two bedroom. You see what I mean? Because they might say, come on, live with me. You can live with me. You got to tell somebody who makes $75,000, 100000 They may say, hey, I will take care of your first and last month's rent. I got you. And when you get on your feet and you, you know, when your checks start coming in from your new job, you could pay me back. And so then they like, oh, okay. Well, hold on now, buddy. Okay, now. All right, now. It's a slim little road. And so then, now you're in a situation where your exit strategy may take six months. That's what you got to understand. The exit strategy may take six months for you to map and plan. But you got to map and plan, and you got to take your time. And you got to... And see, the thing is, is you you smart while you're doing this. You're not arguing with your partner. You ain't arguing, you ain't Blue's Clues, Sherlock Holmes, trying to keep catching them. No, you slowly, gradually start to wean off of them. 
You start to wean off of them. You start to you start to get off your partner. You stop sleeping with them. You stop dealing with them. You know, you stop arguing. You stop engaging. You just cordial conversation. Now, they may stop in their tracks. He or she may stop in their tracks because they could feel the distance. You're not yelling. You're not cursing. You're not arguing. But it feels like you just don't care no more. So now they really sniffing you behind because they like, what's up with you? What you doing? What you got going on? Why you so quiet? Why you ain't arguing? Why you ain't nitpicking? I told you ain't got nothing to hide. Here go my phone. Here go my password. I told you ain't doing nothing. But just because you cool, calm, and collected, it done throw it done throw your partner off the well. They don't know what to think. They like, hold on now, what's going on now? And so, and that's if they care at all. And if they just ignoring you and they don't care and they going about their business, then you know for sure now the relationship is all the way over. And so this is what you got to do. Do not revenge cheat. Because you not only mess yourself up with your partner. Now your partner get to go out and say, you know what, though? He, she, he or she cheated on me too. And probably was cheating on me before. I just didn't find out. But now when I think about it, I, I realize that she was already cheating. I, now that I think about it, because I did see a text message one time before I had ever done anything. So now your name is trash in the streets. So now the next person you talk to is getting back to them. That you was a cheater. Whereas when you don't revenge cheat, now that person you was with can't never say nothing about you. When they when your name come out their mouth, they got to say, listen, I took him or her for granted. I ain't do the right thing. They never did me wrong to my knowledge. Like I never saw nothing, thought nothing, caught nothing. Like that was me. I was stupid. You get to keep your name clean. And then the person that trying to holler at you, the people that try to holler at you, you able to tell them, hey, I'm, I'm in a relationship. And then they come back, they bump into you a month later while you on your exit strategy, while you building, you stacking your bread. Hey, you still in that relationship? Yeah, I'm still in a relationship. Man, they come back four months later, y'all bumping each other at the grocery store, or at the gym. Hey, you still in a relationship? No, I'm single. Oh, for real? Oh, you think we can get to know each other? You see what I'm saying? Now they're like, wow, this a solid person. Nah, this a solid person. This, this person here now, nah, I'm trying to holler, 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 and getting turned down, turned down, turned down. And then, and then the time that they get some play is when you out your relationship. And at that point, boom, you can get that phone them and you can start to build with that person because you've been healing your heart for the last six months because you checked out of the relationship six months ago. You just had to stay in that apartment or in that house because you had to map out and plan. You had to get your plan together. So while you were getting that plan together, you had to stay put. But now you put. So now that you in, now you in the new situation, your heart not already healed because you've been watching these videos, you've been reading books, you've been taking courses, you've been talking to your accountability partner, you've been investing twenty five dollars a week out your paycheck on my mentor dot life to get you some coaching. You've been talking to your coach, so hey, you feeling good now? You ready? You see what I'm saying? It's always another option. Don't ever stoop to their level. Elevate to another level. And if they want to be with you, make them elevate to the level you done went to versus stooping to their level. That's what you got to know and realize and understand. Hey, this is Tony Gaskin. God bless you. We'll talk soon.